You're listening to Broke Man Radio Worldwide, home of the champions, and where you can be broke and still be classy. Oh, it's Sunday morning. It is Sunday, and it's time to have the Sunday morning talk. It's almost like we're in a, you know, we're in a quiet place. We are probably chugging our coffee and just really, let's just reflect on what's going on around us here. Hey, listen, it's just you and me here at Broke Man Radio. You just maybe possible to get past the first couple of seconds here to actually hear what today's about. Today is about living in the past. Are you living in the past today? Here's some ways to recognize that you are. Now, I know. I love using the I thing because when you use the I, well, then you're not really talking down to anybody. So I want to use myself as the guinea pig to basically make a point. So when I drank and acted the fool, all of us have our own vices, our own struggles. My struggle was alcohol. I mean, it was pretty obvious. Many times I've stood in front of a judge and the judge goes, all these things that you did were great, but you've got a problem. I actually had a judge that was a friend of mine and she would come down and have a talk with me and be like, you wrote all these things for the Times Enterprise. You've done all these good things that you tried to do. You've gone to seminary. You've done all these things, but you're ruining that by the fact that you can't stop drinking. So... Whatever it is in your life that's causing you not to be where you should be, then that's where we need the most concentration in our own lives. Living in the past. I lost a really good friend of mine and a good cousin of mine years ago. My cousin died at 19. My best friend died at 22 years old. And the conversation I had with my best friend was me begging him to not drink and drive. He was killed the next weekend, but we did a lot of time. We we would sit up and listen to music. I had this place. It was called the Cadillac, and we would sit there and listen to music and have fun till wee hours in the morning laughing and talking about all the dreams we had. And then one day, it was all taken from me. He was my right-hand man in 1996. So for the next 20 years, every time I drank... I felt like it was bringing me back to that place where I had my best friend, where I had all these things going on. And it brought me back to a time where it was me and Patrick again. And unfortunately, that's not how that goes down. Each one of us are dying by the day. We're all getting, if you're, if you're blessed enough to get older and you make it into your, your forties and fifties and sixties, you're going to lose a lot of people. Seventies, eighties, you lose a lot of people. And then there's those people in the nursing homes that are 95, a hundred years old, and they've lost pretty much everybody, including their own children. So... As we begin to think of the fact that one day we will go, as the movie says, we on deck for the upper room. You got to make it there first, though. And you have to ask God. This is the hard part. This is a part that's really hard. Now, if you've made it this far into this, hear me out. But most people are not. So, But if you're still with me on this one, just think about something here for one second. Okay, there is a heaven. And there is most definitely positively a hell. There are demons and there are angels. These things, all my years of acting crazy and stupid, I can tell you 100% there is. So why would we trade that? Why would we trade the opportunity to go to heaven? That we will risk going to hell because of our own desires and our own shortcomings. And all we got to do is reach out our hand and go, God, please help me. And he will. But you got to mean it with all your heart. See here at Broke Man Radio, yeah, I like to play. I like to have fun. I like to joke around and all that. But I can tell you, I used to play with the Ouija boards. And I've seen some very very strange things as the doors would say and I've also was in a situation to where I was drowning in the ocean by myself 
with a little bitty friend that was too scared to do anything because he was afraid I'd drown him too. And I remember exactly what happened, and it was me praying to God as I'm about to go underwater. And I'm still here. God spared me that day because I didn't call out to anything crazy. I asked my Lord, I asked God to be there for me, and he saved me that day. Now, each and every one of us have a story. You may, you may have a story, but you're not telling nobody your story. For some reason, the miracle that you have in your heart, you're not telling nobody. Hey, but listen, that could help somebody. The, the, the little thing you have in your heart that you know for a fact God touched you and helped you, tell somebody. Especially tell those people that are hurting that have lost loved ones. Nothing is more sad than to see someone leave us that you care a lot about. And I know a lot of people on my Facebook page, people out in my family community that have lost people this year. And it's something that takes a lot out of you. But I'll just say this. How good does it feel for me to tell you this? It won't be long before we get to where they are. And don't you want to be where they are? So the thing is, improve your spiritual walk with God so you can get to where the ones you love the most are. Now, when you go to a funeral and you hear someone say, yeah, they're probably up there right now in heaven. But you know, in the back of your heart, in the front of your mind, and all this in you, that that person was not focused on God. Chances are, when they say that they're going to heaven, chances are they may not be. Don't let that be you. This is Broke Man Radio Sunday morning. Say, hey, listen, have a classy week. Much love from here down the middle of nowhere, the Batwoods Studios, if you want to call it that. But much love. around.